Hello, uh, I am J Trey. A Trey. J Trey and A Trey, we are back again. We're back. It's been a long time. Get pumped. Shouldn't have left you. We're here. Without a dope beat to step to. <laughs> and it's uh, where it's it's today's the day. Um, we are going to be doing our first of hopefully many uh, crunk reviews. That's right. We're going to be getting. A little bit, a little what, silly. How, a little silly. How does how does Stewie describe it on Family Guy? Fall pillows to the breeze, Fall my friend. <laughs> pillows to the breeze. So uh, we're we're gonna be doing that today. Uh, just a little little bit of good uh, housekeeping here. Um, we have had an absence. Uh, uh, someone lost their voice for about a month. I got sick. Great. Yeah. So there was that. I think our next video, where we're gonna have to take a break from the Christian stuff for a minute, and we're gonna have to go back to what I think has been our most successful uh, uh, video to date, which uh, was our review of uh, Saved by the Bell episode, No Hope with Dope. It was a lot of fun, um, and uh, I, I feel like we we've really uh, combed through the catalog of Saved by the Bell and just cherry picked the the most offensive episodes they have and found just the just the cream of the crop and and it would be wrong if we didn't share it with everybody yeah so uh, anybody who spends that much time picking <laughs> apart that show i you either share it with someone or it just goes to shit and you got yeah. nothing yeah and there goes your time if we're if we're wasting our time we're going to waste your time too <laughs> is what i'm saying so um so yeah we're, we're going to be doing an episode of say by the bell next um We'll let you. We'll we'll leave uh, which episode uh, as a mystery until until next time. Uh, but you'll be um, waiting with bated breath. <laughs> I'm sure. But uh, and a after that, we're going to be I think getting back to business um, with uh, the God's Not Dead series. Finally, uh, uh, we have the um, God's Not Dead two will be our next God's Not Dead review. Yes. I'm a little worried that enough time will pass. That we have to watch it again oh. beforehand. I didn't. Oh, I didn't do well the first time. Oh, I didn't do well. I didn't know. Yeah. It's gonna be a more difficult one to do. So I guess we better get the fuck to it. Yeah, and then um, oh, what was the? You had one you had told me about recently. What was it again? Ex accidental. Oh, it's a little hour-long picture I found um, on Amazon. Called accident. Ac try that again. again. Yeah. <laughs> Accidental activist, and it's bad. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are going to be watching a little gem of a movie as we are getting inebriated called Christian Mingle. Um, <clears throat> now we have seen reviews for this before. Uh, including atheist reviews for it, and uh, we just we just had to see it for ourselves. I don't know why, but we did. Uh, and man, this movie's got some got some big old meaty, you know, Christian huevos on it because <laughs> it. Well, and I bet you thought you were gonna go the rest of the night without, without hearing the term "big old meaty huevos," but I almost made it one whole day. It's. <laughs> It's literally the entire message of this movie is, hey, Christian people, you think you're fucking Christian? Get the fuck out of here. No. You need to you need to bleed for your Lord. Like, it's the most... Christian plus. Yeah. It's like, it's like most, most Christians, like, do the 30-day Christian subscription without actually paying for it. They're like, you better become a black card member you're a two now. Year, you're a two-year member. This is a two-year <laughs> commitment immediately off the bat. You need to sign away your life right now. Well, and the thing about this movie is that it it's not just bad no. as a Christian movie. It's just a bad movie. And we just have a unique relationship with bad movies. They're, I just, they're too much fun. I know. It's, it's, it's those guilty pleasures that get you through life. And this is one of them. So, without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get our... Uh, intoxication started. Um, we're gonna do that off camera, uh, for 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 reasons, you know. Reasons. Le le yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, so you know, 
Ooh, movie magic. Ooh. Off the Ooh. screen. Hello, <laughs> we're back again. Uh, we have uh, lowered our inhibitions. We have prepared. We have prepared ourselves. This is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Alright, so without further ado, let's start to dissect this shit sandwich. Let's get this terrible night started. So here we have... I don't know, some bad, uh, sort of Owl City sounding pop I, I can't stand Owl City, and that's an insult <laughs> to Owl City. I don't mind Owl City, but this is making me really angry. Um, sort of a montage of quick cuts of uh, proposals. It's white, Pres it's white people on vacation, that's all it is. <laughs> Pre presumably... These are Christian mingle proposals. I, I'm so yeah, so yeah, it's, 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 it's all white people on vacation. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. They look like those 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 girls that get proposed to at like hockey games in front of thousands of people, and then just look super awkward and walk away. Why would you do this? Yeah. Absolutely. Not. To be fair, yeah, it's like unless you were like certain that this person was gonna say yes, why would you do that? Yeah. Macy Chabert is on a very awkward. Yeah. Very awkward blind date with. You don't show up on a date with this guy and do anything but immediately turn around. Don't even make an excuse, just run. <clears throat> His wardrobe reads like Matrix chic, and it's it's really bad. He looks. He looks like. He looks like Dracula. I'm getting a very Dracula vibe. Sunlight does him no favors. Yeah, he, he looks like someone you wouldn't invite to anything with children. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> first off. I don't know how, but you can eat anything you want there and not gain a pound. That is my home country. What? And the wine is just to die for, even... Uh, Lazy Chabert, the French do not have a cuisine that you can eat whatever you want and you can not, not gain, gain a, a pound. pound. <laughs> Perhaps there are French people that have a certain diet that's very healthy, but that doesn't... No, let's... <laughs> these French meatballs? I can eat all these I want. I'm not gonna gain shit. Oh, yeah. Great. Let's, let's shovel them down. So they say the uh, best cheese comes from between French farmers, too. <laughs> trying to see if he's listening. Yep. That's yeah, that's gonna be the funniest joke the whole fucking movie. That sounds great. Uh, listen, Gwynny. A friend of mine just walked in. I'm just gonna run over and No one has ever okay. called this someone named Gwen Gwenny. Sure. Yeah, and by the way, don't, don't nickname your dates on the first date. That's really Gwen. creepy. Not Gwenny. So now she's at this I didn't get laid dinner with her friends. They're just dumb, stupid guys. Who are equally uninteresting. High school sweetheart? Was she the one that was half his age and half his weight? We're running out of guys. Our half his age and half his weight? Guys. He weighed like 120 pounds. I mean, if you're not careful, you're going to be the last one. That's seven day. foot two. Is <laughs> she just like a little person? I am losing her. Her child. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those movies where <laughs> so, God, so she's 13, is what she's saying. Pretty much. She really needs to work on her conversation skills. There's no charm to her whatsoever, and she's pretty, but... Look at her friends who she hangs out with. I'm, I'm immediately closing the door in her face. Why do you turn on the TV girl. if you're trying to do work on the computer? Because she likes to party. <laughs> Ain't cookies late at night. <laughs> Don't tell her what to do. You should go to France and eat those. She goes, I can do whatever I want. Stop it! Stop being poor! Now, I might look to join the My favorite commercial. Cheesy. <laughs> that is actually a great way to be successful. 
I want eight hours of that guy poor. screaming at me to stop being poor. I want to hear. Hurt, I want him here alive. Let me hear. Stop it. Well, that's gonna cost you. Oh no. Okay, so now Gwyneth has run across a Christian Mingle commercial. We already have a plug for actual Christian Mingle. Christian Mingle is already a well-established thing. I don't know why they needed to make a whole movie as just a plug for their shitty website, but that's exactly what it is. It's, uh, I'm sorry, less than six minutes into the movie, and <laughs> the first commercial. She, she's really looking for someone just as boring and goalless and unhappy as she is. Oh, and she's she out there, it. trust me. He's on Christian Mingle somewhere. Oh, wait, and he has. She's got a Christian Mingle. He's on Christian Her Mingle. Her man's out there, and his name is G O D. Let's <laughs> be clear, okay? This movie looks like it was edited on someone's fucking phone. It's it's mm, it's bad. Hallmark, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You sold out. Hallmark has no shame. Thirty years thinking. <laughs> nice basket bike, you loser. She's passing by on the city streets. I'm like, God, what a fucking loser. <laughs> Everybody, she's passing. She's is slowly saying, like is saying it would be so easy to through. push her off. <laughs> nice helmet, you fucking loser. <laughs> I can do a running drop kick right now. <laughs> Put her in the street. It would be great if her chain got caught in her pant leg or something. Shit! <laughs> Falls over. <laughs> I'm sorry, why should people fall off bikes? Here it goes, fall off bikes. I don't give a shit about your kids. <laughs> okay, so. So, Ender <laughs> Stephen fucking Tobolowski. <laughs> Everyone's fucking B actor worst nightmare. Uh, he's her boss. Oh god. He busts in sort of Kramer from Seinfeld like. <laughs> so here he is. So we can tell she's got more problems than just being thirty and alone. <laughs> he's just wearing a suit. Gwen, I well, shouldn't no, be no, doing no. better than you right You're now. You're playing up his costume too much. He doesn't look like a sea captain. He has a stupid sea captain's hat on, <laughs> a normal suit, and, and a tie with anchors on it. You found a. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say like a gutter on the highway. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So now we know both well, her personal life is interesting and her work life is also not interesting. Thank you, Brad. Have either of you heard of Donnie DeBona? Is that really your name? He is the brother of Donnie DeBona. Oh, my God. Donnie DeBona. 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 He's like a really a non intimidating gangster. Hey, I'm Donnie DeBone. What you gonna do? Oh, ah, shit. <laughs> Donnie DeBone. He just had to do that. He kinda, they kind of dress him up in this movie like he would be a guy who calls himself Donnie <laughs> DeBone. I believe this Donnie DeBone. He has found a cure for baldness. Okay, so she works for this hair replacement place. No, no, she, she's... <laughs> that's not where she works. <laughs> she works for... No, she doesn't. She works for an ad agency that is contacted by Donnie Demona, who has a, like, new pill that helps with your hair follicles. <laughs> She does not work for like hair glove for men. She works for that agency. <laughs> okay, I got Let's lost. Let's be clear. For a I figured. I knew that. They just. I can take almost anything. <laughs> she's so uninteresting and so bad at her job, and she's not focused on it the whole film. <laughs> she's not focused on many things the whole film. Well, she is. She just wants to not be alone, which I get it. Being alone is not fun, but. <laughs> But it really hey, is. it's Donnie <laughs> DeBona. <laughs> Dude, Donnie DeBona got pinched. So, what I understand. Anyone I remember Seinfeld? He's uh, here for three days. Uh, tires. John O'Hurley, who played Elaine's boss on Seinfeld, plays Donnie DeBona. Why does that thing say the stud buddy? What the fuck does that mean? What is the stud buddy? That's gonna be what I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night thinking when, when, when I can't sleep one more. The stud fuck is sound, stud buddy? A stud buddy sounds like a female sex doll. Oh, it's like, like a like sex doll that helps you find studs in a wall. 
<laughs> well, that too. <laughs> yeah, the stun buddy, yeah. The Donnie, like, like a real doll. Yeah, and then there's, like, and there's, there's the stud buddy, and then there's the Donnie the Bum and the Lux stud buddy. <laughs> That's the most popular one they sold out it's the most in two hours last time. Buddy. The Donnie the Bum. She's looking wistfully at the TV. She's she's looking like that TV's looking thick. Like she, it's she's leaning into it. Um, also, nice she is pajamas. Thirsty for a nice Christian man. She is officially signing up for Christian Mingle. So she's trying to appear extra Christian by saying, by indicating in her profile that she goes to church every week. She doesn't. Uh, I don't think she goes to church at all. Really, maybe on the holidays or something. Easter and Christmas. Yeah. But throughout the movie, they uh, talk about how she believes in God throughout the whole movie. She has been baptized, I think they say. Mm -hmm. um, and that even when her, her you know, lack of faith, quote unquote, is, is tested by someone, she tells that person, I'm willing to be more Christian. I'm willing to, you know, commit myself yeah, to expand more. expand my... Yeah. She, commitment to this. She gets challenged and faith. says that, and it's st <laughs> it still isn't enough. We'll get into it, but yeah, it's this movie's fucking ridiculous. So this dude who could not look oh, he's so charmless. You can tell like he's a decent looking human, but there is no charisma, no charm whatsoever. He's like a post. <clears throat> you he know, would be great. The roof of a shanty. He's, I, well, he's I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> a shanty. That seems <laughs> a little harsh. I just mean. I think he would be great in a movie like AI or, uh, you know. Oh, somewhere he has to be like a robot that. Yeah, that has no soul. They're trying to make him feel. <laughs> Yeah, there's one that, that is like trying, the feeling. trying to understand what like humor and and like being a person is, and and, and really the the key is because it's more but you like, would never be alone but, in a room then, with it. But then the twist is without that, like three well, other people with armed. But the, but the twist would be you know, armed to the teeth. The twist would be is that it's actually a documentary of them trying to get him <laughs> to, to actually not <coughs> act the way that he does. So yeah, he's this fucking goon-looking Woody doll who <laughs> who shows up. He cares about about on point, very Woody like. And he is one of the biggest points of frustration in this movie for me because he's the voice of the uh, "you're not Christian enough," which is so ridiculous for so many reasons, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dive into it. He's already talking to her like like it's one of his daughter's friends. Like That's the vibe he's giving off. Looks like he's wearing his dad's coat. He's already talking about his papa. How old is he? How, old is he? How old would you say that he is? Uh, she's 30, so he's got to be... He's probably supposed to be around that age within a couple of years either way. Who's that old and calls their dad? <laughs> I don't like I don't like it one bit. What? Oh, chip. Nothing. It's a photo, isn't oh, it? Chip? Yeah, I, I don't really look like my picture. I kind of cheated on that part. Who doesn't? Mine was from like 10 years ago. I also, I just want to explain it for a second. I'm going to pause it really quick. I'm going to let it run for a while because this isn't the kind of movie where we would need to pause in between talking that much. You know what I mean? Like, we can still talk as it plays, but. We don't need to break this movie down that much because not a lot happens. I mean, no, it's there's a restaurant called Steak and Cake in this movie. <laughs> but other than that, which sounds like the place where all redneck dreams come true. <laughs> Head on down to Steak and Cake. Head on down to Steak and Cake and get your dream on. All right. You wouldn't even get a shake. <laughs> steak and shake and cake. Uncomplicated and a believer. That's me. I like that. So basically saying you're simple and you're a Christian. Man, I like that. That's how I like my women, you'll, man. Yeah, you'll be a good subservient wife. Simple and Christian, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been looking for a simple Christian girl. I don't know why you got a son next to all of a sudden. 
Papa told me to go get one of them sample crispy girls. <laughs> I want one doing too much of that thinking. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, so she's saying grace over the coffee. Like this. She thanks God for the cookies she's about to eat. I have to start thanking God for every cookie I eat. She also like whispers. She whispers a little shit to God, like snarky shit. Like, good job. Like this. It's weird. What do people call it? Gwenny? No one Except calls Gwenny anyone too. Gwenny! No! Why would you assume that someone named Gwen or Gwyneth would want to, to ever be called Gwenny? The fuck is wrong with you people? I like you. God! She's oh, she's doing that thing that people do when they wear hats, but it, they're not actually wearing it. It's literally on the back third of her head. It's the sack hat look. <laughs> it serves no purpose on her head. Oh, another appearance by Don DeBona. And uh, the captain, Stephen Tobolsky, they have entered. All right, now she's alone with DeBona. <laughs> You gotta prove herself to the mama. I think I can be the good, the bad, the ugly. Oh, now she's teasing the mama. I think I am. I hope she can be straight with the mama. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. And the mama can be straight with her. You don't want to deal with the mama the wrong way. <laughs> you gotta Everybody be very careful with the mama. I just. <laughs> you gotta tread lightly with the mama. Yes. Well, I can. Okay, so these are the, the hair pills. The movie seems to want to follow primarily her desire to find a man and her relationship as it builds with this Paul guy. But it also puts this weird emphasis on her job that she's not passionate about and doesn't really... She puts a big emphasis on the bona. <laughs> they go hard with the bona. They go really hard on the bona. <laughs> oh, where a fucking six years That's old. an abundance of the bubble in this movie. <laughs> We're adults. <laughs> okay, she's in now. Do, do you get it? Because she was in Mean Girls, so they're doing a four way call like in Mean Girls. Ha ha ha. I never made that connection. Um, then one of them goes, Boo, you whore. They're just as charmless as the romantic relationships. Sorry to interrupt. He just called his dad Papa again. Not Papa. Papa. Oh, like Paul. Like he's from Papa, Michigan. No. They're at a they're at a, a sushi restaurant, and this dude hasn't tried sushi before, and she she thinks it's the rage. He looks like he hasn't tried anything with any more pizzazz than like lightly buttered bread before. I was gonna, I, I was gonna say like two percent milk. <laughs> Whoa! This milk is too goddamn spicy. Get it? Don't get ahead of yourself. They're they're dating like they've been set up, like they're both doing a favor for another friend. Like yeah, okay, fine. I'll go out with her like one more time. Yeah, we work. We'll sit there and eat sushi and have the worst fucking conversation. I'll go home and have a dump and masturbate. Go to bed. And it'll be fine. It'll be done with. He's the first and only person we see her on a date with after she signs up with Christian Bale. The she's the vampire dude in the beginning. She's just on a date with him. That's before she even signs up for Christian Bale. So he's I don't know if we're supposed to presume this is the first guy she's met. Maybe it is. Maybe she's like, oh my god, someone responded. Maybe that's the level of desperation here, because that's what it seems to be. Well, and you can tell this movie isn't based in reality, because in reality, even on Christian Mingle, you know she'd get like four or five dudes also immediately sending her dick pics, because well, yeah. she looks like Lacey Chabert. She looks like Lacey Chabert. I look like this, and that's what I used to get using dating sites. Yeah, but what like, is she gonna like get? you were on Christian Mingle. Though. Well, not Christian Mingle, but... <laughs> She would get a, she her her first twelve messages would be dudes dicks. I'm just telling you, it wouldn't even be like it wouldn't even be like a, a subtle like hey how's it going or hey nice to meet you or ooh you look interesting or the birds normal barrage no all nope. dicks. <laughs> so she's uh, reading the Bible for dummies. She's at the library getting more books about Christianity. Like she's studying for an exam. She should be focused on the poem. <laughs> 
she just Everyone? needs. She got a deadline with the Mona. Hey, whatever you she, think, she, don't call her Quinn. She's not paying attention to the Mona, and that's a shame. And she's come over for a date. Um, and this is their beautiful home. And it's like a, a sort of couples night thing. It's almost like they took it, like someone had the idea for a, a really poor, cheap C movie version of Couples Retreat, and this was the main cast. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Woody doll. Paul. Paul. Uh, the Woody Paul. He <clears throat> um, the, is the ex-boyfriend of this, uh, whatever he just said her name was. Great. Glenn's made a bit of a... Sure. A bit of, a bit of a goof of herself by quoting an awkward Bible verse. Even though it had exactly to do with what they were talking about. Sorry, I'm not really good at the Why you seem pretty good at the that's what we saw the dead boy. He's the last of the good That's unfortunate. He's taking a nap. It doesn't even look like someone's home. It looks like. Like, it's like lightly, a model home. Like it's lightly staged for someone to come through yeah. to check it out and see if they want to buy it. Stop calling her Gwenny! Uh, she has said multiple times in the movie that's They didn't want to kill this. too much of the sexual magic by saying Gwyneth too many times. That's a really gross name. Yeah. Gwen, he's not better, but... Just call her Gwen, for the love of... For the love of Christ! If you guys really love Christ, stop calling her Gwen. Oh, so it's a Bible reading. It's a Bible study for their date. Why... Oh. This part really bothers me. Because she's now at a bike shop, like a guy who does bike repair. How much money he's banking every day. Um, but but she's what bothers me is not that she takes her bike here because maybe there's something wrong with her bike. What bothers me is that she takes her bike here multiple times in the movie. There's no way you need your bike maintenance. Well, that yeah, many times. you need. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't she care how fucking that one old you are. Sort of janky wheel that is always giving her trouble. Then you get a new wheel. <laughs> She's being safe. <laughs> Problem solved. Get your ass to work. She's Stop on a budget. This dude. She's God. on a budget. I told Mama about that raw fish. Huh. Oh, you did? Oh, boy, did she get a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you talk to someone and you're referring to your own parents, don't so say, I talked to Mama about this. No, I talked to my mom yeah, or my mother. It. Not, no, you don't, that. unless you're talking you to your nothing. sibling I, I'll or even another that you relative. Could say, I love my mama or something like that. Well, yeah, my mama, not, I talked to Mama earlier. No, you don't share Mama. Don't say it like, oh, I talked no. to Mama earlier and had a conversation. <laughs> Oh. It's just weird. I think it, it's supposed Delicious to be selling him as the he, he's the down he's a good home family guy. Boy, yeah. They are walking. I gotta skip some of this. They are walking in front of a uh, barber shop called the Haircutters. That upsets me so much. Oh, you guys need. And it's not like think they worked on that one. I was about to say it's not like they that's that's the actual name of the store. They put that up. You can you can tell they put that sticker on there like right before the fucking cameras rolled. <laughs> not even <laughs> even. No, it's not at all. What Why is the S so far away? Up. Yeah, <laughs> they clearly put that on themselves. <coughs> that, that poor barber shop is never going to get another customer because they're going to be like, oh, is that from that shitty Christian movie? I'm not going there. Walking on a beach one day and he came across this piece of driftwood and he saw something in it. So. He Took it home and he studied it. He studied it. Why? He ended up carving studied a statue of Jesus out of it. Driftwood. Driftwood. Next thing you know, Jesus figure out Jesus figure it out. Changed his life forever. <laughs> Just like that. Like That's so. all he How did. How is that supposed to be a deep story? Let me get this straight. So, his dad's spiritual awakening was him learning a fondness for whittling. <laughs> Don't tell me you saw Jesus in the cheese. No. <laughs> He's like. No. Jesus' love is waiting for me. Jesus' love? So in that For weekend, the love of Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. And found my prize. A love in Christ. I'm going to take a break at like 40 minutes. Here. Well, sweet Jesus. <laughs> sweet Jesus. What? Jesus. I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, first of all. Sweet Jesus. That is... Oh... 
She's right in there with the zinger. I said sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, as ironically as I possibly could. And Lacey Chabert just... Said it with all the sincerity. <laughs> has it right on, the, on her hip. Good God. You find the funny in everything, don't you? I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I that's like that's what breaks my heart about this movie, is that this is supposed that's to be That's what that guy considers funny. to be funny, yeah. Another stupid hat. This one at least covers her head. Look at what her, her, her friend is. Do you know who her friend is? She's the wife in Fireproof. Which one? That one? Yes. Is it? Yes. Ew. And you know what? I gotta <clears throat> get a closer oh, look. So cute. I just want to be respectful. Her hair is dyed a, a different color. Or apparently the one she has the... Recently played by Meryl Streep. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh like that. Yeah. Oh. I forgot that her friends <laughs> had several yeah. appearances in this movie. Oh, look, she's dressing. What the fuck is she wearing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> she looks like a librarian's grandmother. <laughs> She looks like she's in a t like a time travel movie, or no, 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 a movie where she drinks a potion when she's like 90 years old and goes back to being 30, but she's wearing the same clothes when she was, as when she was 90, but now she's taking that potion when she's 30. You know what I mean? Yeah. 17 again, but for a 30-year-old. What? Oh, they're headed to steak and cake. Morgan Fairchild plays Mama, by the way. Have you met our Kelly? I have. <laughs> well, alright. <laughs> that was way really funnier than it should have been. <laughs> Morgan Fairchild was referring to Kelly, uh, Paul's ex, but the way she said our, so it sounded almost like she said our. <laughs> she was pulling Kelly aside. Have you heard of our Kelly? <laughs> Excuse me, have you, have, you, Kelly? have you heard the musings of R. Kelly? Have you seen the Lifetime special? I'm a big fan of R. Kelly. <laughs> have you heard of Mrs. Ro one Robert Kelly? <laughs> I would love to go to Steak and Cake with R. Kelly. Oh man, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here, but oh, I wouldn't like to go there with R. Kelly. But I would definitely go to Steak and Cake. If I didn't have to pay, I would go to Steak and Cake. He also just pointed out that she's dressed like his grandma. It's just a massive plate of steaks and a couple cakes sitting on platters. That's what I'm about. And for this food. That's what America's about. Right? I'm about that life. It's kind of hard to know which to eat first. So, a bottle of A1 right there. No one has anything to do with it. But I think, think if a steak's good enough, you don't need A1. Yeah. I would be so uncomfortable if I was at another table watching like eight or nine people for like a few minutes straight just sit there like this on the smoke. It would be really creepy. I would be like, am I doing a seance or something? If I was in the right place in the restaurant, it would be fascinating to watch. If I was like a table over, I'd be uncomfortable. Like, is it okay for me to continue eating so everyone can hear me? So I can eat? Jesus Christ. Can they shut the fuck up so I can eat and make loud, crude, crass jokes at my table. While farting. Last year when we were vacationing on the Mayan Riviera. Some people are so inconsiderate. <laughs> this is goddamn Christian. I'm feeling really bombarded by the giant plates of steak. You just sit there like appetizer. Like that you like you'd put an appetizer out. Would any of you like a 12 ounce seared steak? <laughs> Then I'll proceed yeah. to take your order. Not a ding or a dollar so, sooner. Sheriff, Sheriff Woody Paul, uh, his parents are going to Mexico with him and basically all these other folks with him to rebuild a bell. <clears throat> or apparently they need a lot of people to go do that. Uh, and, and it's going to take like at least like a, a couple months or something like that. They, and they're not leaving a ding or a dong sooner. Is what he said. So. He's like, well, we might maybe one dong sooner. <laughs> <laughs> if one dong stands she, in our way. We know she's staying for one dong. If one dong I'm or sure one de bona stands in the way. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm sure don't get me sure wrong. Friend. She's and just. Sure she, she just doesn't look like I did when I was in my heyday. <laughs> don't get me wrong, dear. She's but, just. She's not on Kelly. <laughs> <laughs>
You really don't see She won't shower you with golden <laughs> things like you like like <laughs> our <laughs> Kelly <laughs> <Rally>. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> we would throw a golden shell at you <laughs> and R. Kelly. <laughs> think, about, think it over, darling. Think of your future, you and R. Kelly. Who's kind of goofy in between his mama and his papa? It probably wouldn't work anyway. What about a Smart thinking! This is her. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is her. Could've, could've this is her. 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 Pretty fucked up. We're about 44 minutes in. And. Be, uh, I don't know, because she's kind of made of an ass out of herself several times now. Uh, she's thinking that this relationship's over. And how long is this supposed to be gone? A couple months? Something like that. So, about twice the length of their relationship thus far. So, rather than be adults and just say. Hey, you know, good luck to, to you, you know, have a good time. Hey, back, give, maybe yeah, give me a call yeah. when you get back, and, you know, we'll grab a drink or something. No, because, be too well, cool. because if he's alone with another vagina that he used to be alone with, <laughs> it's going to cause, you know. You get, you get alone with R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're happen. alone with R. Kelly, it's <laughs> done, okay? Just pitch into the bone now. We are going to kill Baldness. Never like Let's see if funny. she can please the bone. That's never not going to be funny. Or just bullet. You know, we get a really good looking bald Stephen yeah. type male model. Okay, she's supposed to be the clever ad agent, like just, you know, rolling off different ideas. She's Rat supposed to be like the female the Don Draper, and she sucks. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's the thing, a hair product for dudes is not a difficult thing to advertise. <laughs> it's it's, yeah, it's a simple, need such an angle. Everyone knows they're kind of all bullshit. So you you write your own brand of bullshit and you try to sell it. That's that's what you do. That's what they're paying for. What the fuck are you talking about? The bullet. Jesus. You can make the dispenser like a gun. Guys like guns. I bet we can call it the bullet. It'll sell. Well, and something about make the dispenser like a gun. Some guys can lot. shoot themselves in the head with it. <laughs> I'll just get my airbag. Yeah, so. Or, or is that how they take it? Do they have to take it like a pill? <coughs> Do they have to shoot themselves in the mouth with it? Sometimes we just don't take responsibility. Oh, God. Regardless. So, we want to play, uh, right? Which it is. How morbid. <laughs> I oh, I was over. How do you sell that? Nice hair. <laughs> How do you sell that when I look like a psychopath? I don't know, but it worked for the bona. Going, you know what? Why me? Why me? Well, Why the bona's bona bona gonna get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. <laughs> she has confidence in nothing. That's what's so off funny about her. That's why she can't do her job, and that's why she can't. Why well, she can't be in a relationship? Okay, so Paul's in Mexico now. No, that wasn't the coolest way to tell you I was leaving for a while. Paul, listen up. Is that where he is in Mexico? This is hard to say. Yeah, they're they're fixing the bell. Yeah. I mean, you are such a sweet guy. You really are. You should come down here. So really creepy, like. Come on down. I don't know. He's like, don't worry, the steel slats aren't up. Just come on down. <laughs> And I, I think she sounds flustered at this invitation because she's I, I really like, oh my gosh, this could be serious. Like, you know, I'm so nervous. I would be thinking, I don't want to go to fucking Mexico to fix a stupid fucking bell for two months. I have shit to do and air conditioning here. I have to work on this great bullet concept I just came up with. I'm not going to I gotta get Mexico guys to right shoot now. themselves. How about I see you when you get back? I gotta get guys to shoot themselves in the head with a new, <laughs> with a new, you know, medication. I can't be, you know, running off to Mexico. To Paul, you bell. have enough people to fix the fucking bell. You have twenty-seven people working on one project. It shouldn't project. take you more than three days. Motherfucker, what are you doing? Get back here. Right here on. She's yeah, like, she's heading to Mexico. I, I didn't put up with this shit. My brilliant idea of the bullet to the head gun with our medication didn't go through. I'm going to Mexico. My boss is mad. Guess I figured to fix this bell. Buenos dias, stranger. Oh, and Buenos dias. 
<laughs> that guy learned how to say that that day. Paradise is illusion of paradise. Sweet, more is my what? to that, and so be Paradise, it. and this is oh, his God. version of paradise. You're here with. Uh, I'm losing you. Dozen of his family members no. to fix the fucking no. bell in Mexico. And, and, and like loved ones, no. yeah. And look at the size of this bell. It's not even like a massive thing. It's fucking. It's the size of. It's the size of this vacuum cleaner over here. No, it's not even that big. That's. No, it's, it's like. It's probably two feet tall, maybe. And about. At its base, probably. I don't know. And they're all here to, to fix and a half it. There's like two feet ten in dudes in hard hats. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Really, the only reason she chooses to go to Christian Mingle is because it's what she sees a commercial for. She could go to any dating website. To I mean, obviously, some are more reputable than others. You, you pay for some for, you know, more extensive and more thoughtful, you know, matches and, I don't know, shit like that. Yeah. But... So she just happened to go to Christian Mingle because that's the one she saw a commercial for. Not just like searching internet dating. Like it's fine that she's a Christian, but it's clearly not something that's that important to her. She's sitting there reading fucking Christianity for dummies. So uh, one of one of the chicks that this guy knows found her Christianity for dummies book. Nice job, Brandon. Yeah, which she brought with her. That's fucking nice brilliant. Move. Nice move. She has, like, one tote bag, and it's right in the middle of it. Like, she deserved to get caught for being so stupid. You couldn't even slap a fake cover on the thing? I understand why she 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 got the one that says for dummies, because she's a fucking dummy. <laughs> so, basically, this is the scene where he's like, You know, I feel like you're just not Christian enough, and you're just trying to be, like, a you're like a poser. They both like each other a lot. That's what they just said. Yeah, and again, I'm her... I believe in God. I was baptized. All of that stuff. I yeah, believe in God. Everything, I was baptized. Everything that applies to it. And again, she's open to learning more. We have her. That should be. <laughs> this lanky motherfucker <laughs> has this big old jacket on, and he has her Christianity. Look, it's like a not like a small book. It's like a pretty like you know decently oh, sized. Why are you wearing that sort of oversized like, jacket tonight? Like I've never the size seen of a small you. pizza box. And oh no reason. <laughs> He hasn't folded it up. He's like, oh, what about this? And pulls out her fucking Christianity for Dummies book. Is this your card? <laughs> Is this your book? <laughs> like they found a bag of Tell smack in the, her fucking All your duffel bag or something. They found a strap on in a ball gag. <laughs> no, they found a fucking... It's a book, a book about Christianity. A sort of condensed understanding of Christianity. What else do you think he puts in that pocket? It's a must be a giant pocket. Yes, he has a bag of chips, sausages, a bag of Doritos, fucking six pack of beer. He probably has a sushi pocket now. Has a passport there. But then something bad happens. Look around. Terrible things. But he's in a pinch. R. Kelly can ride one of the pockets. Compound that with the general negative. It's mainly funny to me because this the woman in in question could not look <laughs> less like R. Kelly as well. When you went online, <laughs> there are striking similarities between this actress and R. Kelly. I saw your picture. Your smile. So all the guys you've dated before were so full of themselves, and you saw his picture. Why? And a well, smile, and that's what made you know that he was a genuine person. That makes no fucking sense. She's, she's telling it's him. It's over. She's telling him, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to become more of a Christian with your help. I want your help to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, you know, I just feel like you. If you had just been a little bit more Christian. A little bit more Christian. It could have worked out, but. Because you're only like a level four Christian, and not a level nine Christian. Do you even listen to Three Days Grace? <laughs> Slowly help me get to a place that works for you. That works for both. Yeah, she's being very reasonable. She's still got like a terrible that. personality, mm -hmm. but she's really trying to work with him. Yeah, yeah, that's a great no, example. I see it works. <laughs> he goes, I don't think it works. Not for me anyway. What? Just how fucking conceited. 
No, nobody's flawed. No one should ever, you know, everyone should be so completely 100 percent. I just think. You know, soul bearing from the minute you start dating them and divulge all of their. Like, no, that's not your fucking business. And she's being open and honest with you. And you're being a fucking dick. She's like breaking down, like. Yeah, and he's like, nope. Not holy enough, sis. Yeah. Be gone with you. I'm not gonna unsheath this meat saver for anyone. Especially someone who... Yeah, I know you came to Mexico for time. me and everything. Yeah, you fucking drove to Mexico. Yeah, by the way, good luck getting home. <clears throat> Sorry you weren't Christian enough. That fun just like your grandmother. But exactly I don't think... Guys like him are in a position to be that particular. Oh, look, another hat. Uh oh, boss is bad. So she's lied to her boss about being sick for the whole time she's been gone. And her boss is like, don't get me sick. Yeah, you just fucking took off on a spontaneous trip to Mexico to haul ass after some dick you're after. But. It's okay to lie to your boss and say you were sick. How is that the Christian thing to do? She's like, I've just been choking all day. Choking, I want choking all day. Dude. I the bike shop. Get another tune up. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck is he doing to this bike every time? Uh, maybe she has a thing for this cat. Does he like, does, does it, what they don't show in this is just he like pretends to be working on it for a minute and he just puts his dick out and jerks off onto it. And she's just really into that. She, or, I, I don't know, maybe he's really into it and she, he pays her. Yeah. I, I don't know what their situation is, but what the fuck is he doing to this bike? And the third Christian Mango commercial. Well, it's a different day. Again, she joined. Just get a new fucking bike. Okay, Cupid. Um, match. I, there's a, a shit ton. Uh, what's the E E Harp? Is it E Harmony? E That's the big one. Yeah. Farmersonly.com. That's not 100, is it? J date. Writer. <laughs> This is the bonus stuff. Oh, this is the bonus stuff. <laughs> back talking about the bola again. I just can't believe she's the, in she's the bola. She's really passionate about the bola. She's not passionate. No, that's what she's saying. She's not passionate. Well, she sounds passionate about the bola. <laughs> I think she, her feelings are just hurt because her boss didn't like her terrible shooting hair bullets. Not just because I wanted to. Idea. I'm sorry, Douglas, but I just. Can't. What do you do all day? Shoot, shoot hair bullets all day. What do you do? Not with this. Shooting hair bullets is a euphemism for something I don't want to know. Stealing, stealing hearts and shooting hair bullets all day long. Well, now she's got ample time to read the Bible because she's got no job. Nuzzled up to Genesis. Oh, come on, we're all dancing, man. <laughs> no, I, walk... I don't really feel like it. No, no, if I walked on, into on, a church, on. If I walked into a church and they were dancing and singing and I'm observing from the back of the room and someone comes up to me and starts pulling me to the front, I don't have a full-on fucking mouth out. <laughs> <laughs> do not touch me. I'm trying to do it. I can just imagine you... Get your fucking hands off me! You? Right under your nose, huh? You're what? super religious too? Yeah, I've known you You're obnoxiously years, religious? Hey, why don't you say And no matter what you may think, you're not quite there yet. Now this is even like her closest friend telling her You're not ready. Yeah, you're, you're, you're still not I've got a lot of Christy enough. I'm gonna do this for me. For her. I'm in a relationship with her. Right? Oh, what's that thing? I want him in my life. Who? Who? Does she want your life? Him. Him. Who? Who? Him. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Jesus. I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Hey, I want Jesus in my life. There we go. I said it. Can you say it loud? I want Jesus in my life. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Like this super inspiring moment. <laughs> Because the she music said she swells. wants Jesus in her life. <laughs> like she's making some grand proclamation. Okay, so now Gwen <laughs> has stalked Paul. 
Captain Dickhead. At his church. Yeah. So now she's like, you know what, maybe me and you aren't meant to be, but thanks a lot for reintroducing me to the Lord. Because now we're lit. And Paul's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, if you thought it couldn't get any steamier. They are now parting amicably. Paul is now with R. Kelly. Just telling you about this amazing journey that she's on. Oh? R. Kelly is on an amazing journey. Paul has now committed to the remix to Ignition. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. Gabby had her baby. Did she? Down in Mexico? Right there in the square. Just like she wanted, without a picture. She wanted to have it in Mexico, specifically? In the square? That makes it sound like she gave birth in the middle of town. Like. Right as the bell the was ringing. Square. Yeah, right as the bell got right. fixed. Everyone's like, shut ringing. the fuck up! The baby's trying to sleep. The first few rings of the bell <laughs> induced labor. She has like, a jacket on that has the pattern of like a 1980s couch. It's fucking <laughs> awful. <laughs> but that's the one that's been peed on by a bunch of cats. I was gonna say, definitely. Peed on in a house that's... <laughs> and three smokers we, we, live there for we grew, years. We grew up in a house with cats that peed on a couch, so... We know what this is about. She's wearing a pee couch jacket if I ever saw one. Oh, she's trying to be like... Her eyes are well enough. Have you been to my church? My church is lit. They're always... <laughs> <laughs> she did not... Let's reiterate. She did not say... My church is a lit. No, but she's like, she's like, mine is, you know, real upbeat and it's not fancy like yours. Does that make it any less Christian? So now it's like a this weird sort of social class thing out of nowhere. Paul's always letting people tell him what to do. It's <laughs> probably because he's a robot. <laughs> He really is like data. He literally from, has been he's, programmed. He's like data from Star Trek. It's fucking ridiculous. Definitely something you would want to be able to turn off. You are definitely one of a kind. No, she's not. And I have no doubt. She's kind of a basement bitch. Yeah. Now she's taking the initiative to really make her faith a part of her life. And really, really commit to it. Now she's not just saying she's willing to do it. Now she's doing it and done it. And I was kidding about the 40 days. Oh, oh, and now she's. I gotta skip past this part. It's gonna just piss me off. So <laughs> now she, she's sobbing. Well, and she, throughout the movie, like they kind of tease it here and there in the beginning and throughout the film. But in this little montage, she has signs from God. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. Um. And she bitches at at God, supposedly, this whole time. She's like, come on, what are you doing? I didn't do anything you said. Like, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Come on, ultimate dad. This is just rude. She's putting on a Daniel Carr-esque performance of this part. Oh, yeah. This, oh, okay, okay, I'll do it. That, sh that kind of shit. That's probably where she drew her inspiration. No yeah, one, so she's seeing signs. Let's, let's be clear, no one has ever been inspired by the movie <laughs> Daniel's Lot. The creator of Daniel's Lot watched that movie and probably planned to kill himself the next day. <laughs> but just never went through with it. That's what happened. No one's ever been I didn't inspired say positively by inspired. <laughs> so here's a very offensive letter. <laughs> my sorry for my English not so good. From the girl, the little girl came up and hugged her in Mexico. Oh, God. With a really bad accent. Yeah, it's bad. You two is playing in the background. And now she's like, I can finally move on. Because now I think I found my calling. Here's this weirdo who sent me the letter with the bell. She's like, this girl can't speak English for shit. I gotta get down there and teach her how to speak English. She's gonna learn today. She can't speak English for shit. Twenty-seven people, all they did was take the bell that was not hung up and took some rope and hung it up. And that was it. For months, they were just down there playing guitar around a fucking campfire. It took twenty people two months to hang a bell with some light rope 
from a structure in Mexico. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Why? Not like, oh, we're on a, we're on a mission trip to, uh, to help, you know, uh, re- rebuild homes that, you know, that have been ruined and in some sort of disaster or... Yeah, not to, to deliver food or aid or whatever it is, but not to to hang a fucking old ass bell up on a church. No, <laughs> mission accomplished. No. Waste of time. Good job, guys. <laughs> so now, Gwyneth is teaching in Mexico. That loser who sent her the letter has has learned almost nothing, nothing since <laughs> since the year she's been teaching. Some kid busts up in the class and he's like, Eduardo, he's like, you gotta... She says, S- slow down, poor, 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 Like... In English, Eduardo. Poor, poor, Eduardo. Very important. You must learn now. But it's very important. Great. Right. Oh. What could it be? Emergency. Yes. <laughs> this better be fucking good, Eduardo. I was gonna say, it's dusty as shit out here. What's that? It's a teeny What's little it? church with six pews. <laughs> it's about two and a half pews. Bus size pews, yeah. Paul? It's Paul! Oh, look at you. You're great. He's in Mexico. If you're looking for Kelly, she's not with me. Our Kelly's not with me. <laughs> Our Kelly's gone. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe she's trapped in a closet. She can't do this with the text. Really? That's what you're gonna say right before you kiss her? So, you really still like me then? Truth is, I never stopped. They kissed for a second mm-hmm. time. That's. <sighs> Slow down, girl. Fifty sh- oh, got a third time. Fifty Shades free. I was gonna say hand on the nape of his neck. This is a terrible representation of Mexico. I was gonna say this is very offensive. <laughs> this is probably filmed in fucking Arizona. And the sign. There's a sign on, on a piece of fucking driftwood. Get it? it it's her it's driftwood. Well. Jesus Christ. That's enough. That'll be enough of that. <sighs> Get it. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I was, so proud. <laughs> I was worried when it began. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to edit so much shit out of this video. <laughs> we have almost... This is almost an hour and 45 minutes of footage, for fuck's sake. Well, that's not that bad. Not for you, motherfucker. You don't have to edit it. Well, I know, but as far as compared to the length of the movie... Yeah, that's a good point. Four that's hours. weird that, that us, us being fucked up is what, what hurried that, that process. I, I was going to say, we're on point. <laughs> well, for <laughs> day tray and day tray, uh, we are, like I said, going to be doing uh, an episode of Saved by the Bell, one I'm very excited about because, um, as I said, get pumped. It is quite offensive, and I'm... <laughs> oh, God. It's offensive, gonna, my favorite. It's, it's just going to be so much fun to dive into. and Can't wait. So, that's going to be our next project. Uh, because uh, some people lose their voices and we're lazy pieces of shit sometimes, it could take us a while. <laughs> but, my voice is back mostly. Yeah, and plus, we're back on it. So, let's do it. We can do it together. I believe in it. I believe in you guys. I believe in us. This has hashtag been, believe. Hashtag believe. This has been J Trey. Hey Trey. Peace. See you guys. <laughs>